Good morning, Ohana Christian Church. Let's all stand.
soul. Your love defends me. Your love defends me. And when I feel like I'm all alone, your love defends me. Your love defends me. Spirit 
living water. Your spirit guides me to the heart of the Father. Let your praise ring louder every day and every hour. Cause your spirit guides me to the heart of the Let's all pray. Thank you, Lord, for who you are and all that you do, Lord. Thank you for being the gracious God that you are, Lord. That even when we fall short, you never change. You're always there. And you always lift us up, Lord. As we listen to the words, your words, Lord, allow it to just sink in our hearts, Lord. And that we may meditate on it, Lord. We thank you every day, Lord, again for who you are, what you do, what you will do, and what you've done. We say this and we pray this with one voice, one mind, one heart, one understanding. And we all say, Amen. Amen. Good morning, church. It's so good to be with you. Uh, just some, a couple of very, really quick announcements. Firstly, um, gosh, I can't believe Thanksgiving and Christmas are, are, is around the corner. And so Thanksgiving Sunday service for us uh, as a church is usually the Sunday before Thanksgiving. So this year it's on November the 20th. So uh, just uh, one of those uh, mark the date and save the date on your calendar things. So November 20, Sunday. Um, 9 a.m., we're going to have our Thanksgiving service. And uh, immediately after service, we're going to have a yummy, special Thanksgiving meal. So don't eat breakfast during the, on that day. And maybe even starve the night before. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, but, um, and you don't have to bring anything. It's not a potluck, so don't bring anything. Um, and we're just going to provide a special Thanksgiving meal on that day. So uh, uh, maybe what you can bring is a family member or a friend or a neighbor that you've been praying for. That would be a great uh, day to bring a fr friend or a family member to church. And the second thing is, uh, announcement is, December 18th is a Christmas serving opportunity. Hawaii Family Life Ministries uh, is going to be holding their annual uh, Christmas party for foster children and foster families. And we usually help with uh, shave ice, um, and cotton candy and popcorn. And so we're going to do, going to do that the uh, same thing this uh, year. We're going to provide uh, those three um, stations and we're going to need volunteers. And so if you want to volunteer, make sure you uh, text me uh, really quickly because it goes by fast. We don't need too many volunteers. And so uh, I think it's at, setup is at three, event is at five. And so I just put four o'clock to eight o'clock-ish around there. So we need setup. Um, Running the, event, uh, running the machines, and then break down. It'll be a great event. It's in Mililani. All right. Um, I continue my series this Sunday on my 10 favorite scriptures. And so, so far we've looked at my favorite number one, which is Genesis chapter one. My favorite number two, which is Psalm 23. My favorite number three, which is Proverbs chapter three, verse five through six. And then... My favorite, number four, was Romans chapter 8, verses 35 to 39. And this morning, we're going to look at the next two favorites. And so my favorite, number five, is Lamentations chapter 3, verses 21 to 23. 
This is a very interesting book. Before we look at the verses on the screen, I want to give you some historical context. And so here's the historical context of Lamentations. Remember, remember last week I said Psalm 44 is a song of lament, that it's a sad song? Well, Lamentations is a book of lament. It's a sad book. You see, the book of Lamentations is mourning this national disaster that had happened in the year 586 B.C. This was when the Babylonians came and destroyed Jerusalem. And they destroyed the temple, the center of worship. And furthermore, the Babylonians took many of the people of God captive and into exile. This is the context of the book of Lamentations. Here's some pictures of the dark period in Israel's history when the Babylonians took the people of God captive and into exile. And while you're looking at those pictures, let me read something to you. It's the Bible Knowledge Commentary, and it describes this period in history this way. It says, The armies of Babylon turn, burned the temple, the king's palace, and all the other major buildings in the city. And they tore down the walls of the city which provided her protection. When the Babylonians finally finished their destruction and departed with their prisoners, they left a jumbled heap of smoldering rubble. That's the context of the book of Lamentations, a very dark time in Israel's history. And the author is traditionally attributed to Jeremiah. Jeremiah is traditionally the author of Lamentations, although we are not really sure who the author of Lamentations is. And here's a picture of Jeremiah during this dark time. It's a painting by Rembrandt. Look how dark that painting is. Look at Jeremiah. He cries out because of the destruction. He cries out to God because of the mourning, because of the suffering, because of the affliction. Robert Loth, this bishop of the Church of England, says this about the book of Lamentations. Listen to this. It says, Every letter is written with a tear. Every word, the sound of a broken heart. That's the book of Lamentations. If I could summarize the book of Lamentations in just one phrase, it would be this. Overwhelming human sorrow. The book of Lamentations is five chapters long. And every chapter is full of of suffering and pain and brokenness. Five chapters of overwhelming human sorrow. But there is this surprise in the middle of the book of Lamentations. Jeremiah says something really interesting in Lamentations chapter 3, verses 21 to 23. Listen carefully. He starts with this little word packed with power. He says, but. But this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Smack dab in the middle of lamentations, surrounded by all this sorrow, all this suffering, all this overwhelming human sorrow, are these few verses. It's almost like a ray of sunlight. It's almost like a ray of hope. Jeremiah uses a very powerful word here in Hebrew, it's the word has said that, that we've looked at many times, translated 
steadfast love or loving kindness. Tim Bulkley, Dr. Tim Bulkley uses this definition, stickability through thick and thin. The closest that our culture gets to the word has said or the steadfast love of the Lord is in our marriage vows, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish till death do us part. As God is my witness, I give you my promise. That's has said. That's stickability through thick and thin. That's steadfast love. So in the middle of this overwhelming human sorrow, Jeremiah writes, but I call this to mind. I recall this. I remember this. And therefore, I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. It's as if Jeremiah is, is determined to remember this steadfast love, the, the hesed of Yahweh, so that he can have some hope that he can cling on to. It's as if Jeremiah is saying, no matter what has happened in the past, no matter what is happening now, and no matter what happens far into the future, I'm going to hold on to, I'm going to cling to this steadfast love of the Lord that never ceases, it never ends. I'm going to cling to this steadfast, this has said, this stickability through thick and thin, this for better, for worse, for richer, for poor, in sickness and in health, this has said of Yahweh, I'm going to, I'm going to hold on to it. Then, he goes on to say something really neat. I love this part. He says, this has said, this, this steadfast love of the Lord, they are new every morning. I love that part. Every morning, church, you get a fresh portion of the steadfast love of the Lord. A fresh serving of the steadfast love of the Lord awaits you as you wake up in the morning. And some of you, you go to sleep much too late and you're worried and you have anxiety and you can't sleep. What I, uh, what I encourage you to, go to sleep early because the sooner you go to sleep, the sooner that morning will come and the sooner morning will come, the sooner that you get a fresh portion, a fresh serving of the hesed of Yahweh, of the steadfast love of the Lord that never ceases, of His mercies that never come to an end. Why? Because they are new every morning. Great is the Lord's faithfulness. I love Lamentations chapter 3, verse 21 to 23. When I find myself in the middle of, 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 of suffering and pain, and I, I feel like life is kind of overwhelming me, I lean into, I press into these three verses. When I'm having a particularly hard day, I'll stop. I'll just stop and declare this small, three, this small and powerful word. I'll, I'll declare, but I'm having a hard day and I'll just say, but this I call to mind and therefore I have hope. And I'll de just declare these three verses. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. Oh, they are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness, Lord. Lamentations chapter 3, verse 21 to 23. My favorite, number 6. Oh, I love this psalm. It's Psalm 91. I, di I discovered this psalm. I never really saw it until during the pandemic, actually. I discovered this psalm like in, like really early on in the pandemic, like March of 2020. And when I discovered this psalm, I felt like I needed to commit this psalm to memory right away. And I'm so glad I did because over the past two and a half years, when I, feel, when I have feelings of anxiety or depression, I'd recite this psalm out loud. 
sometimes you just have no one to encourage you, and so you got to de- encourage yourself sometimes. And so I just encourage myself by reciting Psalm 91 to myself. I just declare it to myself out loud. In the past two and a half years, not lying to you, I would say that I've recited Psalm 91 out loud well over a hundred times. Psalm 91 is 16 verses long. 273 words in the New International Version. But every word in the psalm is carefully chosen. Every word is important. There's no wasted words. There's no unnecessary words in Psalm 91. Psalm 91 is a psalm of trust and confidence in God. Psalm 91 speaks of divine protection. Interestingly, I heard that sometimes soldiers actually carry, they'll like carry this Psalm 91 in their uniform as they go out into the battlefield. I'm not sure if that's true. Is that do you, have you ever heard of that before, Psalm 91 in the battlefield? Oh, it, got, it would be issued to every soldier to, before deployment. Oh, wow. Yeah, through the chaplaincy. So soldiers would go out to the battlefield with Psalm 91, and I'm thinking to myself, church, we're in a spiritual battle. We're in a battle too. So, in fact, Ephesians chapter 6 tells us that We do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. We're not necessarily in a physical battle, but we are in a spiritual battle, Ephesians chapter 6 tells us. And I'm thinking to myself, if our soldiers are carrying Psalm 91 out into the battlefield, shouldn't I also be be carrying Psalm 91 out? on the tablet of my heart in the spiritual battlefield as well. And so I said, I'm memorizing Psalm 91. I'm going to keep it close to my heart. And I would commend Psalm 91 to you. I would encourage you to memorize Psalm 91 over the next few weeks and months. You'll be blessed and glad that you did. And so I'm just going to recite Psalm 91 to you like I've done over a hundred times to myself. And as I recite at the end of Psalm 91, I'm just going to take a moment of pause, a moment of silence, and I just want us to have this time of silent reflection and silent prayer. And so here it is, Psalm 91, beginning in verse 1. It says this, it says, Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely He will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with His feathers and under His wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you you will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you say, the Lord is my refuge, and you make the Most High your dwelling, no harm will overtake you. No disaster will come near your tent. For He will command His angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the cobra. 
you will trample the great lion and the serpent. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call on me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Let's enter a time of silent reflection and prayer as the worship team comes up. Dear Heavenly Father, some of us are going through an overwhelmingly hard season in life. And we need you. And we thank you for the just-in-time word of Psalm 91. The just-in-time word of Lamentations 3, 21-23. Thank you for ministering to our souls this morning. And we too want to declare with our hearts the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. Thank you that they are new every morning. Thank you that your faithfulness is great. We honor you and we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Would you all stand and let's worship God with one more song. When all I see is a cross sky, you 
this blessing this morning. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. God bless you and have a wonderful week. Please enjoy refreshments with us. <laughs>